Hi guys, my name is Hie, I'm a Terran player for Ogaming Academy, and I wanted to do my second video on Terran vs. Terran because that's what the uh, one of the viewers said that I wanted to see, a Terran vs. Terran video. So we'll get right into it, and just kind of talking about the matchup in general right now. When when I watch, you know, DreamHack or, or ESL or WCS or whatever, the the most common games that I seem to see are Marine Tank vs. Marine Tank, and that's the most common uh, kind of game that I seem to play. So, this this replay will be a Marine Tank vs. Marine Tank game, and some of the concepts will transfer over, like um, positioning and where we you know where we want to position our army, in uh, in terms of where we want to expand to next, and being aggressively positioned and blah 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 blah. All that stuff will transfer over, but a lot of stuff like moving out with these small little pokes, um, it those that kind of thing won't really help. So, yeah, some of the concepts will transfer over, but some of them won't. Um, so we'll we'll talk about the uh, the meta game itself a little bit more. Um, right now, everybody is opening up with Marine Tank versus uh, is opening up with Banshee, excuse me. And the reason why that is is because every Terran is also at some point doing a little Marine Tank push, and having a Banshee and a Raven and a Viking really help with doing those kinds of small little pushes. And a lot of the times, if your Banshee does a lot of damage, you can just kind of outright kill your opponent with um, with the follow-up timing. Um, so, we'll go ahead and hop into this game. This guy and I had played actually three games on ladder, in a back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back at this point. I beat him the first game. The second game, I tried to metagame him, because he opened up CC first. And I tried to go two racks reaper and just get an easy win, and it didn't work. So now he's calling me Milk Boy for some reason. At this point, I already have him blocked. But so if we go, you know, gas first, gas up for our back reach. Cloak Banshee, just very standard Cloak Banshee build. He does some kind of weird reactor Hellion build that doesn't really do anything. So if we're doing damage, not, not really a whole lot. I mean, we kill four workers and... Uh, three or four marines. His hellions are just all over the place, though. But we're expanding, so we're not we're not in bad position. We take our eBay, get you know marines going, get tanks going. So okay, this push out is just with um, our first two medevacs, two tanks, stim, and a, uh, a banshee, a raven, and a viking. Typically, this is enough to keep air control at this point in the game. He does a really weird decision to get a bunch of a bunch of Vikings with his Raven, so this push can't really do anything because he has air superiority. So we just kill one of his tanks. 200 secret missiles will kill a tank. Um, it's not worth it to do just one. We do like we back up with our tanks and our Banshee and our Raven, and um, you know we just do a double drop into his main and snipe off his two, uh, his one one coming. So he's taking his third, we're taking our third. And the next concept I want to talk about will come up here in just a minute. We try poking out. He has, you know, sensor towers everywhere, so at this point we can't really do anything. We have to kind of be defensive at this point. Okay. So he starts getting getting ready to move out. Okay. So, when we when we talk about TBT, the biggest, like, th the most important thing going into the mid game is your positioning. And there's two kinds of places that you want to be positioned. The position that defends your current expansion and your main base, and the kind of position that defends your future expansion, which we're actually gearing up to take right now. And so when you're defensive, you want to be considering, you know, oh, well, here's the expansion that I have, here's my main base, I need to defend these two, and then ultimately concern myself with this base in a little bit. When you're attacking and being aggressive, your biggest objective is to keep your opponent off of their next base. And he's not really trying to do that. What what we see this guy do is he goes from here to here to here to here to here. 
never really concerning himself with this area. Yeah, he sends a marine up here, but he never sends his his big full force. And the best place that he could have probably set himself up would have been, you know, sending himself over here, coming back, and then sieging up like right here, and um, sending his marines up here to get a. Uh, to, to get shots off on this uh, on the CC, he could go all the way up here, but then he kind of leaves himself open to, uh, to counterattacks. But he's he's not really prioritizing his expansion his expansions to deny correctly. He really wants to get rid of this base, so we'll we'll watch him, and we'll actually just follow him. Kind of you know he's poking around trying to get, and then he comes up into this choke, you know that we're already moving back towards, and just gets absolutely mauled. So he's done being the aggressor, now we're going to go be the aggressor, because we just took a really good fight. We see that he has no 4th base yet, we have ours already secured. So okay, whoops, what did I do? Close that, okay. So now, from this position, although we're aggressively stanced, we really are defend- we're defending this base, because he can't- how can he get over to this base feasibly? I mean, he can go, you know, all the way around here, and you know, up through here and you know take take the take the high road to this base but he can't just you know just push over here it's um very inconvenient for him to uh try and push through this so um day nine actually talked a lot about um in one of his tbt dailies from back in wings liberty but it's still applicable um cutting off the map in a straight line so right now the straight line that we're creating is going from here to here so it's kind of right up the uh up the middle if that makes sense. I hope it does. We take a little bit of a bad fight. He can't land his fourth CC. So we're just getting bigger and bigger and bigger. We do send this contin this contingency force over here. And this may look like a big chunk of the army, but ultimately he can't engage this army when it's sieged up, no matter how badly he wants. He tried to this little army. He tried to do a little, or, you know, a big run by over here, but it just didn't work. So we just took the army that was up here denying this base, and just threw it down here. You know, three tanks and a handful of marines is negligible at this point in the game. We have a massive bank, so we're just we're just being annoying, just trying to draw him. We're trying to spread him out and make him as thin as we can. So, he tries to into us, gets rolled, we have a bunch of tanks. Losing marines at this point is perfectly fine, as long as we keep our tank count high. I'm actually going to time date this. This is kind of just me, me just killing him. We get maxed out again, we're going to fly ahead, and, and we win. So, the biggest difference that that struck me in this game into why I was why I won and why he didn't was because of where and how we chose to be aggressive. As you know, he was poking back and forth here. I'm not sure where where in the replay that was. We'll find it though. That's not it. That's too early. Here we go. Maybe even a little bit further. Okay. Okay. Here we go. So, again, we're, just try we're trying to do stuff, but then he eventually starts to get aggressive. He's trying to be aggressive here, in a base that we already have. He should be aggressive towards this base. And we ultimately get it up, because he's not being aggressive towards it. Whereas, when we decide to be aggressive, you know, we see that his third base is already secured. So we're just going to go for the base that, you know, the next base. And then deny that, and eventually starve him out. So that I think is the most important concept of um, of TBT in the in the mid game going into the late game is denying your opponent that next base and kind of, and then really kind of choking them out that way. So I think that's it for this video. So I hope you guys found this helpful. Um, thank you for watching. Um, if you want to follow me, you can follow me at heas heasc2 on Twitter. It's up somewhere in my uh, in my overlay it should be like right here in this general area I think um, you can follow me at on twitch uh, twitch.tv slash he 2 
and you can subscribe to my YouTube channel. I'll be probably posting more of these videos in, uh, in the near future. So thank you all for watching. I hope you found it useful, and good luck. Have fun.